What's up guys, my name is TechNubber here for Troubleshoot and today I'll be showing you how you can set up a Windows 10 or any other version of any operating system you can download in an ISO into a Hyper-V VM on your computer. So if you've used VirtualBox or VMware before, then you're probably familiar with running a operating system within an operating system. However, Hyper-V is built into Windows and probably has very, very, very good support and performance compared to other third-party products because it's a Microsoft developed piece of software, especially if you're gonna be running Windows inside of Windows. First of all, you need to make sure that your computer has the ability to use a VTX and Hyper-V. You can enable those within the BIOS. All you really need to make sure is that your CPU supports those technologies. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and click on the search bar and type in Turn Windows and select to Turn Windows Features on or off. Click on it. And when you're in here, find the Hyper-V section and make sure that it's ticked. You won't need to worry about anything else that's here. Just hit OK. And then when prompted to restart your computer, restart it. Once you've enabled Hyper-V, restarted your computer, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and hit Start and type in Hyper. If you don't see the Hyper-V Manager, then we need to go ahead and add it ourselves. Yes, we've already told Windows to install it, but the program's not registered on our computer. So simply hit the search bar once again and type in MMC. Click on it. Hit yes when prompted, click file, add slash remove snap in, and then scroll down to Hyper V Manager. Hit add, and then hit OK. Then hit connect to server after clicking on Hyper V Manager, and hit local computer. Hit OK. Then double click on Hyper V Manager, and now we're on the Hyper V Virtual Machines page. Now we can go ahead and create our new virtual machine. So we'll hit new, and then virtual machine. Then we'll hit next and give our virtual machine a name. I'll call this Windows 10 X64. Change where it's installed to, and then I'll hit Next. Next up, Generation 1, Generation 2. I'm gonna hit Generation 2 because it supports 64-bit and newer virtualization features. Next, select the amount of RAM that you'd like to give your virtual machine. By default, it's one gigabyte. 2048 is two, 4096 is four gigs, 8192 is eight gigs, and then 16384 is 16 gigs. Of course, you can make these numbers a bit more square. I just like to keep it in powers of two because computers really like that. Of course, what you'll need to do is open up your task manager, head across to the performance tab, and then memory, and then make sure that the amount of available RAM here is much more than the amount that you're giving to the virtual machine. You can't give your virtual machine more RAM than exists on your main desktop PC that you're running this off of. And make sure that you have quite a bit left on your host computer for your actual programs to run and your operating system to function. I've got 64 gigs, so giving this a quarter of it shouldn't be too bad. Then I'll hit next and change the network connection to default switch. Next again, and then just double check where you're putting the virtual hard disk to. I'm not gonna go ahead and give it 127 gigs, I'm instead gonna give it only 50. You can of course change this to whatever you want. Then hit next. And now before continuing with the tutorial, we actually need to download the Windows 10 ISO. Now of course, if you're gonna install Linux or anything else like that, you'll need to get the ISO to install. But to do the Windows 10 version, simply head to the first link in the description down below, which is the download Windows 10 page. Then you'll be able to download the tool and create an ISO that way, or you can do a little workaround. If you're using Chrome, right click, inspect, and then hit the little device icon up here. And under where it says responsive, change that to a phone. I'll set it to Galaxy S5. Hit refresh, and you'll see that the URL bar at the top changes from Windows 10 to Windows 10 ISO. Hit the close button in the top right, not the program, but the inspect element window, and you'll see that the page is full screen. Now we have the ability to download Windows 10 disk image ISO file. Hit select edition. I'll select the latest. Hit confirm. Select the product language. English. Confirm. And then we'll choose Windows 64-bit. And now we're downloading the Windows 10 ISO. Give this a minute to download. Then once it's finished downloading, tap back into the Hyper-V Manager and install an operating system from a bootable image file. Hit Browse. And then find the ISO file that we created earlier. Click on it and hit Open. Then hit Next. And then Finish. 
So before we go ahead and start this up, we need to right click on this and go to settings. Under firmware, you can choose the boot order. Just leave the DVD drive first because that's where we're installing Windows from. Under security, you can change things here. I'm going to leave everything as is. Under memory, you can change the amount of RAM that it has. Under processor, you can change the amount of virtual processors. Then under name, you can change the name and add a description if you'd like. And I'm just going to leave the rest of these as they are. Under checkpoints, you can change how often you want the virtual machine to back up. Smart paging is fine. Automatic start action is fine. And automatic stop action is fine. Just hit OK. Then we're going to double click on the name up here. Then you'll see the screen here. The virtual machine Windows 10 X64 is turned off. When you hit the start button, be prepared to hit any key on your keyboard just to start the installation. So you can see press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Just press any key and we'll be booted into the Windows 10 installation. Hit next and install now. Now, if you've ever installed Windows before, you probably know what steps are coming next. Otherwise, just carry on following the tutorial along. Hit I don't have a product key unless you're actually going to put one in. As far as I know, not putting in a key just means that you have a limited version of Windows 10, but it's still completely legal. So I'm going to select Windows 10 Pro for workstations, just so that it doesn't install with a lot of that bulletware, and I'll hit next. Then read through the license agreements and hit I agree, and then next. Then we'll hit custom, hit new, apply, OK, and then hit next. Now we're installing Windows. All you need to do is just wait. Then I'll hit US, yes, US again, skip. Then when you get to this page, just click I don't have internet, continue with limited setup because I don't want to install the rest of those Microsoft add on bulletware things. I'm not going to use OneDrive or anything. Anyways, that aside, we're going to give it a name. I'll name this test. Next, create a memorable password. Next, set security questions. I really don't care about this, so I'm just going to hit one, one, and I don't know, one. Done. Then I'm going to hit no, decline, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these off. Accept. And boom, there we go. We have our own version of a Windows 10 virtual machine running here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And there we go. We're now on the Windows 10 version that we just downloaded, putting in the password. There we are. A fully functional version of Windows 10 that you can basically do anything you want on. So obviously it's downloading a bunch of bloatware and other things. You can go ahead and delete all of those. I'm not going to go into any information there. However, that's it. We've got it set up going to where we installed it. We can go inside of it and see that there's a couple of things here. Snapshots, which are previous versions, which you can set up yourself. Virtual hard disks, which are where all the files are stored. Virtual machines, which are the actual files that help run it. You won't need to worry about any of these files. In total, these files take up about 10 gigabytes with a fresh install of Windows 10 64-bit. Obviously, the more that you put onto your virtual machine, the more that that will fill up. But anyways, that's about it. Once you're done, you can hit action and turn off. And boom, that's about it. Closing out of that, we can go ahead and close out of this as well. Hit yes to save settings and we'll just save it into the default folder. Then once you have it closed, you might be confused on how to get back. Simply go to the search bar, MMC once again, open it, hit yes when prompted for admin, hit file, open, and then pick the MSC file that we save. And boom, we're back in here and we can start up the PC if we wanted to. Now, of course, before I go, there's one extra thing that I need to show you, and that is how to get it to show up in your start menu. So typing in Hyper-V gives you nothing but this, and using the MMC way is a little bit roundabout. There is a way for fixing this. If you can't find it under here when you type in Hyper-V, then hit the Start button, scroll down to Windows Administrative Tools, and under here you'll find the Hyper-V Manager and Hyper-V Quick Create. Opening the Hyper-V Manager brings up this window here that we saw before, and that's about it. You can, of course, pin it to your Start menu by dragging and dropping it somewhere here. So anyways, my name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.